ओम भूरभुव स्वह तत्सवितुर्वरेण्यम भृगो देवश धीम धियो यो न प्रचोदया ओम शांति 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 नमस्ते माय डियर फ्रेंड्स दिस इज थर्टींथ वीडियो ऑन टॉक्स विद राम नाम है ऋषि टॉक नंबर टू हंड्रेड फोर महर्षि ऑन सेल्फ इल्यूमिनेशन द आई कॉन्सेप्ट इज द ईगो आई इल्यूमिनेशन इज द रियलाइजेशन ऑफ द रियल सेल्फ इट इज एवर शाइनिंग फोर्थ एज आई आई इन द इंटेलेक्चुअल शीत इट इज प्योर नॉलेज रिलेटिव नॉलेज इज ऑनली ए कॉन्सेप्ट द ब्लिस ऑफ द ब्लिसफुल शीत इज ऑल्सो बट ए concept unless there is the experience however subtle it is one cannot say i slept happily from this intellect he speaks of his blissful seat the bliss of sleep is but a concept to the person the same as intellect however the concept of experience is exceedingly subtle in sleep experience is not possible without simultaneous knowledge of it that is relative knowledge the inherent nature of the self is bliss some kind of knowledge has to be admitted even in the realization of supreme bliss it may be said to be subtler than the subtlest the word vijnana clear knowledge is used both to denote the realization of the self and knowing the objects the self is wisdom it functions in two ways when associated with the ego the knowledge is objective vijnana when divested of the ego and the universal self is realized it is called vijnana the world raises a mental concept therefore we say that the self realized says knows by his mind but his mind is pure again we say that the vibrating mind is impure and the placid mind is pure the pure mind is itself brahma therefore it follows that brahma is not other than the mind of the says the mundaka upanishad says the knower of brahma becomes the self of brahma is it not ludicrous to know him and become him they are mere words the says is brahma that's all mental functioning is necessary to communicate his experience he is said to be contemplating the unbroken expanse the creator sukha and others are also said never to swerve from such contemplation nimisarde ne तिष्ठति व्यर्ति ब्रह्मयी विना यथा तिष्ठति ब्रह्मदा सनकादा सुकादे दिस इज फ्रॉम तेजो बिंदु उपनिषद सच कॉन्टम्पलेशन इज अगेन ए मेयर वर्ल्ड हाउ इज दैट टू बी कॉन्टम्पलेटेड अंटल अनलेस इट इज डिवाइडेड इन टू द कॉन्टम्पलेटर एंड द कॉन्टम्पलेटेड when undivided how is contemplation possible what function can infinity have do we say that a river after its discharge into the ocean has become an ocean like river why should we then speak of contemplation which has become unbroken as being that of unbroken infinity the statement must be understood in the spirit in which it is made it signifies the merging into the infinite 
सेल्फ इल्यूमिनेशन और सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन इज सिमिलर टू इट द सेल्फ इज एवर शाइनिंग वट डज दी वट डज दिस आई इल्यूमिनेशन मीन दैन द एक्सप्रेशन इज एन इम्प्लाइड एडमिशन ऑफ माइंड फंक्शन द गॉड्स एंड द सेज इज एक्सपीरियंस द इनफिनिट कंटिन्यूसली एंड एटरनली विदाउट देयर विजन बींग ऑफ स्क्योर्ड एट एनी मोमेंट देयर माइंड आर सरमाइज बाय द स्पेक्टेटर्स टू फंक्शन बट इन फैक्ट दे डो नॉट सच सरमाइज इज सरमाइज इज ड्यू टू द सेंस ऑफ इंडिविजुअलिटी इन दोज हु ड्रॉ इन्फ्रेंसिज देर इज नो मेंटल फंक्शन इन द एबसेंस ऑफ इंडिविजुअलिटी इंडिविजुअलिटी एंड माइंड फंक्शन आर को एग्जिस्टेंट द वन कैनॉट रिमेन विदाउट द अदर द लाइट ऑफ द सेल्फ कैन बी एक्सपीरियंसड ओनली इन द इंटेलेक्चुअल सीथ देर फोर विज्ञान ऑफ वॉट एवर काइंड ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट और ऑफ द सेल्फ डिपेंड ऑन द सेल्फ बींग प्योर नॉलेज टॉप नंबर टू हंड्रेड फाइव मिस्टर कोहन हैड बीन कोजिटेटिंग ऑन द नेचर ऑफ द हार्ट इफ द स्पिरिचुअल हार्ट बीट्स इफ सो हाउ और इफ इट डज नॉट बीट देन हाउ इज इट टू बी फेल्ट Mercy replies this heart is different from the physical heart beating is the function of the latter the former is the seat of spiritual experience that is all that can be said of it just as a dynamo supplies motive force to whole systems of lights fans etc so the original primal force supplies energy to the beating of the heart respiration etc devoti how is the i i consciousness felt mercy as an unbroken awareness of i it is simply consciousness devoti can we know it when it dawns mercy yes as consciousness you are that even now there will be no mistaking it when it is pure devotee why do we have such a place as the heart for meditation mercy because you seek consciousness where can you find it can you reach it externally you have to find it you have to find it internally therefore you are directed inward again the heart is only the seat of consciousness or the consciousness itself devoti on what should we meditate mercy who is the meditator ask the question first remain as the meditator there is no need to meditate talk number 206 mr b c das a lecturer in physics of Allahabad University asked does not intellect rise and fall with the man mercy whose is the intellect it is man's intellect is only an instrument devotee yes does it survive man's death mercy why think of death see what happens in your sleep what is your experience there devotee but sleep is transient whereas death is not mercy sleep is intermediate between two waking states so also death is between two successive births both are transient devotee i mean when the spirit is disembodied does it carry the intellect with it mercy spirit is not disembodied the body is differ it may not be a gross body it will then be a subtle body as in sleep dream or day dream intellect does not alter the bodies may differ according to circumstances devotee the spirit body is the astral body then mercy the intellect is the astral body now devotee how can it be mercy 
Why not? You seem to think that the intellect cannot be limited like a body. It is only an aggregate of certain factors. What else is the astral body? Mercy, but intellect is a seat. Mercy, yes, without intellect, no seat is cognized. Who says that there are five seats? Is it not the intellect that declares this? Talk 207. Deep sleep is only the state of non-duality. Can the difference between the individual and universal souls persist there? Sleep implies for forgetfulness of all differences. This alone constitutes happiness. See how carefully people prepare their beds to gain that happiness. Soft cushions, pillows, and all the rest are meant to induce sound sleep. That is to say, to end wakefulness. And yet the soft bed, etc., are of no use in the state of deep sleep itself. The implication is that all efforts are meant only to end ignorance. They have no use after realization. Talk number 208. It is enough that one surrenders oneself. Surrender is to give oneself up to the original cause of one's being. Do not delude yourself by imagining such source to be some god outside you. One's source is within yourself. Give yourself up to it. That means that you should seek the source and merge in it. Because you imagine yourself to be out of it. You raise the question, where is the source? Some content that the sugar cannot taste its own sweetness and that a tester must taste and enjoy it. Similarly, an individual cannot be the supreme and enjoy the bliss of that state. Therefore, the individuality must be maintained on the one hand and God had on the other so that enjoyment may result. Is God insentient like sugar? How can one surrender oneself and yet retain one's individuality for supreme enjoyment? Furthermore, they say also that the soul reaching the divine region and remaining there serves the supreme being. Can the sound of the word service deceive the Lord? Does he not know? Is he waiting for these people's service? Would not he, the pure consciousness, ask in turn, Who are you apart from me that presume to serve me? Still, mo still more, they assume that the individual soul becomes pure by being divested of the ego and fit for being the body of the Lord. Thus, the Lord is the spirit and the purified souls constitute his body and limbs. Can there be a soul for the souls? How many souls are there? The answer must be there are many individual souls and one supreme soul. What is soul in that case? It cannot be the body, etc. What remains over after all these are eliminated must be said to be the soul. Thus, even after realizing the soul as that which cannot be discarded, the supreme soul must be known to exist. In that case, how was the soul realized to be the ultimate reality after discarding all that was alien to it? Should this be right? The soul which was described as that in any inalienable reality is not the true soul. All such confusion is due to the word soul, Atma. 
the same word atma is used to signify the body the senses the mind the vital principle the individual soul and the supreme being this wide application of the word has given rise to the idea that the individual soul jivatma goes to constitute the body of the supreme parmatma i o arjuna am the self seated in the heart of all beings bhagavat gita chapter 10 shloka number 20 the stanza shows that the lord is the atma self of all beings does it say the self of the self if on the other hand you merge in the self there will be no individuality left you will become the source itself in that case what is surrender who is to surrender what and to whom this constitutes devotion wisdom and investigation among the vaishnavites too saint namalwar says i was in a maze sticking to i and mine i wandered without knowing myself on realizing myself i understand that i myself am you and that mine that is my possessions is only you thus you see devotion is nothing more than knowing oneself the school of qualified monism also admits it still adhering to their traditional doctrine they persist in affirming that the individuals are part of the supreme his limbs as it were their traditional doctrine says also that the individual soul should be made pure and then surrendered to the supreme then the ego is lost and one goes to the regions of vishnu after one's death then finally there is the enjoyment of the supreme or the infinite to say that one is apart from the primal source is itself a pretension to add that one divested of the ego becomes pure and yet retains individuality only to enjoy or serve the supreme is a deceitful stratagem what duplicity is this first to appropriate what is really his and then pretend to experience or serve him is not all this already known to him 19th june 1936 talk number 209 mr b c das the physics lecturer asked about free will and destiny mercy whose will is it it is mine you may say you are beyond will and fate abide as that and you transcend them both that is the meaning of conquering destiny by will fate can be conquered fate is the result of past actions by association with the wise the bad tendencies are conquered once experiences are then viewed to their proper perspective i exist now i am the enjoyer i enjoy fruits of action i was in the past and shall be in the future who is this i finding this i to be pure consciousness beyond action and enjoyment freedom and happiness are gained there is then no effort for the self is perfect and there remains nothing more to gain so long as there is individuality one is the enjoyer and doer but if it is lost the divine will prevails and guides the 
course of events. The individual is perceptible to others who cannot perceive divine force. Restrictions and discipline are for other individuals and not for the liberated. Free will is implied in the scriptural injunctions to be good. It implies overcoming fate. It is done by wisdom. The fire of wisdom consumes all action. Wisdom is acquired by association with the wise or rather its mental atmosphere. Talk number 210. Man owes his movements to another power whereas he thinks that he does everything himself. Just like a lame man bluffing that what he helped to stand up, he would fight and chase away the enemy. Action is impelled by desire. Desire arises only after the rise of the ego. And this ego owes its origin to a higher power on which its existence depends. It cannot remain apart. Why then prattle, I do, I act or I function? A self-realized being cannot help benefiting the world. His very existence is the highest good. Talk number 211. Mr. B. C. Das, the physics lecturer asked, Yoga means union. I wonder union of which with which? Mercy. Exactly. Yoga implies prior division and it's and it means later union of one with another. Who is to be united with whom? You are the seeker, seeking union with something. The something is apart from you. Yourself is intimate to you. You are aware of the self. Seek it and be it that will expand as the infinite, then there will be no question of yoga, etc. Whose is the separation we yoga find it? Devotee, are the stones, etc. destined to be always so? Maharshi, who sees stones? They are perceived by your senses which are in turn actuated by your mind. So they are in your mind. Whose mind is it? The questioner must find it himself. If the self be, find this quest question will not arise. The self is more intimate than the objects. Find the subject and the objects will take care of themselves. The objects are seen by different persons according to their outlook and these theories are evolved. But who is the seer, the cognizer of these theories? It is you. Find yourself. Then there is an end of these vagaries of the mind. Devotee, what is this mind? Maharishi, a bundle of thoughts. Devotee, where from has it its origin? Mercy, consciousness of the self. Devotee, then thoughts are not real. Mercy, they are not. The only reality is the self. Talk number 212. Mercy observed Pradakshina, the Hindu rite of going round the object of worship is always within me. The true significance of the act of going round Arunachara is said to be as effective as a circuit round the world. That means that the whole world is condensed into this hill. The circuit round the temple of Arunachala is equally good and self-circuit. That is, turning round and round is as good as the last. So, all are contained in the self, says the Rebhu Gita. I remain fixed, whereas 
innumerable universes becoming concepts within my mind rotate within me this meditation is the highest circuit that is pradakshina 20th june 1936 talk number 213 mr b c das asked why the mind cannot be turned in word in spite of repeated attempts mercy it is done by practice and dispassion and that succeeds only gradually the mind having been so long a cow accustomed to graze stealthily on other estates is not easily confined to her stall however much her keeper tempts her with luscious grass and fine fodder she refuses the first time then she takes a bit but her innate tendency to stray away asserts itself and she slips away on being repeatedly tempted by the owner she accustoms herself to the stall finally even if it lays loose she would not stray away similarly with the mind if once it find its inner happiness it will not wander outward talk number 214 Mr Eknath Rao a frequent visitor asked are there not modulations in contemplation according to circumstances mercy yes there are at times there is illumination and then contemplation is easy at other times contemplation is impossible even with repeated attempts This is due to the working of the three gunas qualities in nature. Devotee, is it influenced by one's activities and circumstances? Mercy, those cannot influence it. It is the sense of doership, krutrutva buddhi, that form the impediment. Twenty-second June, nineteen hundred thirty-six. Talk number two hundred fifteen. Maharshi was reading G. U. Pope's translation of "Through What's Come" and came across the stanzas describing the intense feeling of bhakti as thrilling the whole frame, melting the flesh and bones, etc. He remarked, "Mani, manik watsagar, watsagar." is one of those whose body finally resolved itself in a blazing light without leaving a corpse behind another devotee asked how it could be maharshi said the gross body is only the concrete form of the subtle stuff the mind when the mind melts away and blazes forth as a light the body is consumed in that process nandanar is another whose body disappeared in blazing light major chadwick pointed out that alisa disappeared in the same way he desired to know if the disappearance of christ body from the tomb was like that Maharshi no Christ body was left as a corpse which was at first entombed whereas the others did not leave corpses behind in the course of conversation Maharshi said that the subtle body is composed of light and sound the gross body is a concrete form of the say the lecturer in physics asked if the same light and sound were cognizable by senses mercy no they are super sensual it is like this gross is what a universal universe jiva 
individual body subtle sound and light nada bindu mind and prana primal atma self param transcendental atma self this i will show in the in this graphics i will show separate they are ultimately the same the subtle body of the creator is the mystic sound parnava which is sound and light the universe result into sound and light and then into transcendent param i repeat the last mercy no they are super sensual it is like this gross under ishvara universal universe under jiva individual body subtle under ishvara sound and light nada bindu under jiva mind and prana primal under ishvara atma self param transcendent jiva atma self param transcendental they are ultimately the same the subtle body of the creator is the mystic sound parnava which is sound and light the universe result into sound and light and then into transcendent param talk number 216 maharshi gave the meaning of arunachala aruna means red bright like fire the first is not ordinary fire which is only hot this is gyanagni fire of wisdom which is the neither hot nor cool achala means a hill so it means hill of wisdom 29th june 1936 talk number 217 mr a bose an engineer from bombay asked does bhagwan feel for us and show grace mercy you are neck deep in water and yet cry for water it is a it is as good as saying that one neck deep in water feels thirsty or a fish in water feels thirsty or that water feels thirsty devoti how may one destroy the mind mercy is there a mind in the first place what you call mind is an illusion it starts from the i thought without the gross or subtle senses you cannot be aware of the body or the mind still it is possible for you to be without these senses in such a state you are either asleep or aware of the self only awareness of the self is ever there remain what you truly are and this question will not arise devotee is the body consciousness an impediment to realization we are always beyond the body or the mind if however you feel the body as the self then it is of course an impediment devotee is the body or the mind of any use for the self mercy yes in as much as it helps self realization 30th june 1936 talk number 218 maharshi has been looking into the shiva purana this day he says shiva has the transcendental and immanent aspects as represented by his invisible transcendental being and the linga aspect respectively the linga originally manifested as arunachala stands even to this day this manifestation was when the moon was in the constellation of orion 
Ardra in December. However, it was first worshipped on Shivratri Day, which is held sacred even now. In the seer of speech, Parnava, the mystic sound Om represents the transcendental Nirguna and the Panchakshri, the five syllabled mantra represents the immanent aspect that is Saguna. Again, Sri Bhagwan recounts the anecdote of Parvati testing Rama. The story is as follows. Rama and Lakshmana were wandering in the forest in search of Sita. Rama was grief-stricken. Just then, Shiva and Parvati happened to pass close by. Shiva saluted Rama and passed on. Parvati was surprised and asked Shiva to explain why he, the Lord of the universe being worshipped by all, should stop to salute Rama, an ordinary human who having missed his consort was grief-stricken and moving in anguish in the wilderness and looking helpless. Shiva then said, Rama is simply acting as a human being. Good under the circumstances, he is nevertheless the incarnation of Vishnu and deserve to be saluted. You may test him if you choose. Parvati considered the matter took the shape of Sita and appeared in front of Rama as he was crying out of name of Sita in great anguish. He looked at Parvati appearing as Sita, smiled and asked, Why Parvati, are you here? Where is Sambhu? Why have you taken the shape of Sita? Parvati felt abashed and explained how she went there to test him and sought an explanation for Shiva saluting him. Rama replied, We are only aspect of Shiva. We are all only aspects of Shiva, worshipping him at sight and remembering him out of sight. Talk number 219. Rama Krishna Swami a long resident dis disciple asked Maharishi the meaning of Tavairumanachala Sarvam. Tavairunachala Sarvam is stanza in the five hymns. Maharishi explained it in detail, saying that the universe is like a painting on a screen the screen being the red hill, Arunachala, that which rises and sinks is made up of what it rises from. The finality of the universe is the God Arunachala. Meditating on him or on the seer, the self there is a mental vibration, I to which all are reduced. Tracing the source of I, the primal I, I alone remains over and it is inexpressible. The seat of realization is within and the seeker cannot find it as an object outside him. That seat is bliss, is the core of all beings. Hence it is called the heart. The only useful purpose of the present birth is to turn within and realize it. There is nothing else to do. Devotee, how is annihilation of predispositions to be accomplished? Mercy, you are in that condition in realization. Devotee, does it mean that holding on to the self the tendencies should be scorched as they begin to emerge. 
Mercy, they will themselves be scourged if only you remain as you truly are. 1st July 1936, talk number 220. Mr. B. C. Das, the physics lecturer, asked, Contemplation is possible only with control of mind, and control can be accomplished only by contemplation. Is it not a vicious circle? Maharishi, yes, they are interdependent. They must go on side by side. Practice and dispassion bring about the result gracefully. Dispassion is practiced to check the mind from being projected outward. Practice is to keep it turned inward. There is a struggle between control and contemplation. It is going on constantly within. Contemplation will in due course be successful. Devotee, how to begin? Your grace is needed for it. Mercy, grace is always there. This person cannot be acquired, nor realization of the truth, nor inheritance in the self, in the absence of Guru's grace, the Master quoted. Practice is necessary. It is like training a roguish bull confined to his stall by tempting him with luscious grass and preventing him from straying. Then the Master read out a stanza from through what's come, which is an address to the mind, saying, O humming bee, namely mind, why do you take the pains of collecting tiny specks of honey from innumerable flowers? There is one from whom you can have the whole storehouse of honey by simply thinking or seeing or speaking of him. Get within and hum to him, Harikara. Harimkara. Devotee, should one have a form in one's mind supplemented with reading or chanting God's name in one's meditation? Mercy, what is mental conception except it to be, uh, it be meditation? Devotee, should the form of should the form be supplemented by repetition of mantras or dwelling on divine attributes? Mercy. When japa is the predominating tendency, vocal japa becomes eventually mental, which is the same as meditation. Talk number 221. Mr. Bose, a form means duality. Is that good? Mercy. One who questions like that had the better adopt the path of inquiry. Form is not form for him. Devotee, in my meditation a blank interposes. I see no figure. Mercy, of course not. Devotee, what about the blank? Mercy, who sees the blank? You must be there. There is consciousness witnessing the blank. Devotee, does it mean that I must go deeper and deeper? Mercy, yes, there is no moment when you are not. Talk number 222. Dr. Popat Lal Lohara, Popat Lal Lohara, a visitor, has studied several books including Upadesa Sara and visited several saints, sadhus and yogis, probably 1500 as he puts their number. A sadhu in Trimbankam has told him that he has still debts to pay which, if done, will enable him to have a realization. His only debt, as he conceived it, was the marriage of his son. It has since been performed and he now feels himself free from karmic indebtedness. He therefore seeks Sri Bhagwan's guidance for freedom from mental unhappiness which persists in spite of his not being indebted. Mercy, which text of Upadesa Sara did you read? Devotee, the Sanskrit text. Mercy, it contains the answer to your question. Mercy, my mind cannot be made steady by any amount of effort. I have been trying it since 1918. 
द मास्टर कोटेड फ्रॉम उपदेशा सारा मर्ज इन द माइंड इन टू द हार्ट सर्टनली कंप्राइज मैरिटोरियस ड्यूटी कर्मा डिवोशन भक्ति योग एंड सुप्रीम विजडम ज्ञान दैट इज द होल ट्रूथ इन ए नट सेल डेवटी That does not satisfy my search for happiness. I am unable to keep my mind steady. The master quoted again from the same book. Continuous search for what the mind is results in its disappearance. That is the state path. Devotee, how to search for the mind then? Mercy, the mind is only a bundle of thoughts. The thoughts have their root in the I thought. He quoted. However, investigates the origin of the I thought. For him, the ego perishes. This is the true investigation. The true I is then found shining by itself. Devotee, this I thought rises from me, but I do not know the self. Mercy. All these are only mental concepts. You are now identifying yourself with a wrong I, which is the I thought. This I thought rises and sinks, whereas the true significance of I is beyond both. There cannot be a break in your being. You who slept are also now awake. There was not happiness in your deep sleep. whereas it exists now what is that has happened now so that this difference is experienced there was no i thought in your sleep whereas it is present now the true i is not apparent and the false i is parading itself this false i is the obstacle to your right knowledge find out where from this false i rises then it will disappear you will be only what you are that is absolute being devotee how to do it i have not succeeded so far mercy search for the source of the i thought that is all that one has to do the universe exists on account of the i thought if that ends there is an end of misery also the false i will end only when its source is thought Dr Lohara asked for the meaning of one stanza in Upadesa Sara Mercy the one stand the one then in sleep is also now awake there was happiness in sleep but misery in wakefulness there was no i thought in sleep but it is now while awake the state of happiness and of no i thought in sleep is without effort the aim should be to bring about that state even now that requires effort sleep wakefulness under sleep effortless happiness no i thought wakefulness no happiness i thought bring about sleep even in the waking state and that is realization effort is directed to extinguishing the i thought and not for assuming the true i for the latter is eternal and requires no effort on your part so here i end this video thank you for watching and listening this video please like share and comment and subscribe my channel thank you my dear friends namaste namaste namaste